Well, hi, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, last Friday, I had the pleasure of being on Ranty Flatter's channel and had a discussion with him about the rotation of the Earth. I made a presentation and then answered questions from his audience. Now, rather than go over that, uh, because you can see that on his channel, and I'll put a link to it in the description, or you can see the original presentation on mine if you just want to look at that, I thought I'd go over some of the comments that were made during the chat and afterwards. Now here you can see a few of them. We have Trotter saying, Bob the science guy, they will not listen to any of the excellent points that you're going to present. They'll just come up with junk like water finds its level, etc. Okay, fair enough. And then Jimbo comes along. Lies start when Bob opens his pie hole. Ye be warned. CGI Randy, sigh. Here we go again. Johnny Five, almost Jesus Christ, I think, or Jesus Christie, or whatever it is. Bob, the pseudoscience guy, is only here to lie. Askin says, Bob, the seance guy. And then Johnny Five comes out again. Bob, you have no evidence for the globe. Now, mind you, all of these comments were put up before my presentation even started. Uh, Ranty is actually just introducing me. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, guys, just to give you an ever so brief overview of my presentation, we talked about sunrise and sunset and the pattern of shadows and light on the underside of clouds. We talked about star trails. We discussed weight differences between the equator and areas away from the equator. We talked about laser ring gyros, and then I ended my presentation on the gyro compass, which proves that the Earth is rotating without question. Now, as part of my presentation, I made it very clear that I was going to answer questions related to these points and these points only, because I only wanted to discuss the presentation. I didn't want to get tossed down a rabbit hole on 25 tangential items. I wanted to talk about these five things right here. Now, to his credit, Ranty understood this very well and tried to keep things on track, but let's see how his audience did. Now, about 15 seconds into my presentation, I had just put up the top two images there, one of the sunset and the other of Mount Rainier. Here are the first comments that come out. What a moron this Bob from I Got Questions. All right, how do you know that I'm a moron? I just basically introduced myself and put up two images. Empirical evidence, please, says Oxbow Spirit. Now, what kind of empirical evidence are photographs? What exactly is it that you consider empirical evidence? I think that's pretty good evidence. From Kawabunga Joe, let's prove the Earth spin by looking at an unknown object in the sky. Idiot Bob the fallacy guy. There's a sunset and there's a mountain. I think most of us know what a sunset and a mountain is, so I don't really think that that's an unknown object, do you? Wow, this guy isn't doing any research, is he? Well, I found the pictures, didn't I? Trotter comes on and tries to bring them all to ground. I've already watched Bob's presentation, and I'm looking forward to anyone explaining any errors. Well, good luck with that. Well, now most of this presentation is going to be on the comments that came after my video was shown. I thought that I would put this one out. This is from Ryan Q. Vincent, and it was such a good comment, I just had to mention it. The optical gyro is not an absolute device. It detects something moving that affects the speed of light in different directions. So the speed of light, Ryan, is different in different directions. Have you ever looked up something called the Michelson-Morley experiment? You might want to have a look at that. The speed of light is constant in all directions. There is no ether drift. And it says here, you need to check it with a mechanical gyroscope. You know, Ryan, it's funny you should mention that because the next thing on this presentation is the mechanical gyro compass, which shows that the Earth rotates without question. You know, here's a little bit of advice for you, Ryan. When a presentation is put out several hours before a discussion, you might want to look at it so you don't make foolish comments like this. Oh, well. 
Okay, so the presentation is over and Ranty has just asked for questions from the audience. Now, so far during the presentation, uh, it's mostly just been personal attacks against me, none of which are really worth repeating. But here are the first two questions that we have out. Bob, why did you have a cartoon Earth behind you? And why not the real deal? Oh, never mind. What kind of question is that? Do you expect me to be floating in space and have a photograph of the Earth behind me? It's an animation. It's a background. I happen to like it. It goes along with the fact that we're talking about the rotation of the Earth. Okay, Dr. La. Bob, in the many months you've spent on Fed, whatever that is, what is that, Flat Earth Debate or something? Why haven't you made any videos of your own experiments to prove your claims? As a matter of fact, I do have videos that I've done at my kitchen table. I've measured the circumference of the Earth with a builder's square. I've developed a flat Earth model that fits with many of these findings. I've done a lot of stuff on my own. But more importantly, I've looked at the stuff that's out there and analyzed it. Now let me give you a little bit of a lesson in science. One of the most important things in science is something called peer review. That's how we know science is accurate. We check things. That's what I do. I have no problem with that. Perhaps if you checked your own information a little better, you wouldn't run into all of these problems. Well, for quite some time, there was an awkward silence from the chat. You know, after all the personal attacks and the nana nina news from the Flat Earthers, here's their chance to ask questions about the points that I raised. Nobody has any. So let's kind of get grounded to the presentation real quick now that we're answering questions. Now, here are the points that I made in the presentation. One is the pattern of light and shadows at sunrise and sunset. The other is star trails, weight differentials on the equator and away from the equator, laser ring gyros, and the mechanical gyro compass. Let's go see what questions we have. Okay, from Dr. La, Bob, you just dodged the Coriolis question. No, I made it clear that I was not going to answer any questions that were not on subjects covered in the presentation. I simply declined to answer it. From Ron, a mechanical gyroscope does not show precession. Have you ever seen a mechanical gyroscope or a top, Ron? Do you know what precession is? David Reed, this is a classic David Reed question. Bob, if the stars are suns, why don't we see them during the day? Guys, why don't you answer this question for David Reed in the comments? Why don't we see stars during the day? Now, here is an interesting question, not because the question itself is interesting, but because it shows a classic Nathan Oakley begging the question fallacy. Ron says, Foucault claimed a mechanical gyroscope would show drift. Why don't modern gyroscopes show drift? Do you see what he did there? He made an assertion that modern gyroscopes don't show drift without support, claims it to be a fact, and makes it his premise. And tries to question the presentation based on that. Modern gyroscopes, of course, show drift. They show precession. They show everything that gyroscopes have always shown. Okay, in the next set of uh, questions, Ryan Q. Vincent uses another flat earth logical fallacy, and that is the argument from ignorance. He says a gyro compass is a free-running mechanical gyro after it has been aligned to the north. The guy is telling lies as to how it works. Read the manual and see the video. Have you seen the video or read the manual? Because if you had, you would know that's not how a gyro compass works. A mechanical gyro compass is a gyroscope that is locked into the horizontal. It processes to align itself with true north. It works on the spin of the earth and the spin of the earth alone. Okay, continuing our parade of logical fallacies from the flat earth, we have Mr. I am Mr. Panda Bear. Question, if the three ring laser gyro in fact measures the spin of the earth, which of course it does, why do laser gyros in the construction field not detect the motion of the earth? First of all, what laser gyros in the construction field? Do you have a specific model or an example of a laser gyro in the construction field and show that it does not measure the rotation of the earth? I suspect you're probably talking about a laser leveler, and this is what's called a red herring fallacy. This has absolutely nothing to do with an inertial navigation system, a ring laser gyro, or a gyro compass, which is things that we're talking about here in this presentation. 
this is designed to try and derail the conversation a little bit, to try and ask a question out of left field to see whether or not they can phase me. Unfortunately, he wasn't able. So here we are finishing up. Well, here are three of the last questions that were on the chat. Cannonballs have historically been fired straight up in the air and landed back in the cannon. Really, Arwen? Really? Can you show me an example of one? Gleam, so light is moving at different speeds depending on directions. How is that? Great question. Why don't you go ahead and answer that, Gleam? Question, Bob is debunking Neil deGrasse Tyson and the folk call pendulum sniper nonsense, correct? Well, no, not correct. I never mentioned any of these people. All you're doing is throwing names out to try and attribute arguments to me that I'm not making. That's called a straw man fallacy. Well, I think I'm going to finish up on this comment from the after chat. Now, James Stackhouse here had a lot of questions for me that I didn't respond to because they were off topic. So he decides to go on something that I did respond to. I had mentioned uh, that if you jump up and down in the back of a pickup truck going 40 miles an hour, you'll continue to go 40 miles an hour even if you're up in the air and you'll land in the same spot. Well, he takes exception to this. He says, wrong, 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 Bob. You're wrong about jumping up in a pickup truck. I've done it in a flatbed at 55 miles an hour. Jeez, man, that doesn't sound real safe. You do not land in the same spot. God, I wonder why. I've already had done it a dozen times, marking my shoes with chalk, and every single time I land a few inches behind my starting point. You're either wrong or you are lying, or, which is more likely, you simply don't understand motion and the fact that you've got a little wind resistance acting on you, pushing you back a little. I've had people with me and others doing it. You are mistaken, my creepy bald friend. Creepy bald friend? I've got some hair up there. Besides, I'd rather use my testosterone for other things than growing hair. Well, guys, I think I'm going to wrap this up. Now, I put a link to Ranty Flatter's uh, video in the description of this video, along with my original one. I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you get a moment, follow me on Twitter or hit the little like and subscribe down in the lower right corner. So signing out from Northern Michigan, this is Bob the Science Guy. Hope to see you again soon. Take care, guys.